Good day. Good day to every Liverpool fan tuning into this video right about now. I know you guys are happy. You're ecstatic. It feels like you just won the league, basically. Right? I know. I know that's how good it feels, right? Because going three games without a win and then winning the fourth game, nine goals to nil, must feel damn good. It must feel like, wow, the team is back on track. Forget about what happened. Forget about the loss and the two draws. Forget about that. You know, on track again. One game at a time. One game at a time. It's a big win. Fantastic performance from Liverpool. And we know that is the Liverpool team we've come to, you know, um, expect these things off. See, recently they smashed Crystal Palace 7-0. And to defeat Bournemouth, not just to pick up a win, but 9-0 shows that Klopp and his boys, I think they were hurt by going three games winless. And they want to send a statement to the rest of the league. The likes of Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, Manchester United, that they're still... A force to be reckoned with. Quite an entertaining game, I have to say, because it was like double sweetness as a football fan. You're watching Manchester City versus Crystal Palace come from being 2-0 down to winning the game 4-2. And at the same time, you're watching Liverpool destroy Bournemouth 9-0. God, the football gods are blessing us with some magnificent football matches. How many goals are, is, is that? That's 15 goals in one 90-minute session. Because both games are played at the same time. But what a response from Liverpool, man. Um, Bournemouth, they must feel like, you know, things are just going south for them. Very tough run of fixtures. 4-0 loss to City. 3-0 loss to Arsenal. That's 7 and a 9-0 loss to Liverpool. That's 16 goals conceded in the span of 3 matches without scoring a single one. Scott Parker, he's under a lot of pressure. They they won their opening game. I think that was against Aston Villa if I'm not mistaken. And they they've definitely um been, been silenced. But I think things are going to get a, a, things could only get better. For, for Scott Parker and, and Bournemouth because the fixtures are going to get easier at least on paper and they would feel like they, they, would, they could compete and they can't let this 9-0 job in relegate them because if you check what happened to Southampton twice in the last few seasons they got 9 nils and they didn't get relegated so still light at the end of the tunnel for Bournemouth but Look, let's talk about this game a little, man. Liverpool coming into the match, winless in the first three. Bournemouth came into the game with more points than Liverpool. So I don't think they would have thought that they would have gotten this kind of beatdown. Maybe they, they thought that they, they would put up a fight and still lose, but not 9-0. And Liverpool started things off from the proceedings. Luis Diaz in the third minute. And I did write down some notes there, so I have all the, the, the notes from the game. I, I work, man. I work. Writing notes for the Man City Crystal Palace game, writing notes for the Liverpool Bournemouth game. So that was a cross into the box. I think that was Trent Alexander Arnold, if I'm not mistaken. I had tuned into the Liverpool game, the, and, and the same time I tuned in, the goal scored. So Diaz with that early header. It was a VR check for off, offside, and it was given. And then Harvey Elliott with the sixth minute goal. And that's Firmino with the, the bad first touch. And the inadvertently, um, he inadvertently laid the ball off to Harvey Elliott. And good shot for the Liverpool youngster. The next goal came in the 28 minute, but not before that big chance missed by Mo Salah, man. Look, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, Salah had a terrible day. Imagine Liverpool scored nine and Mo Salah didn't even score a single goal. He's been in good goal scoring form so far this season. This, you know, without playing too great, but he's been, you know, at the right place at the right time. 
but he had to score that. He had to bury that man. And there was a, also another chance by Salah, well saved by Travers in the 19th minute. Liverpool were cruising like Smokey Robinson, 2 0 up and against a Bournemouth team who wasn't really putting up much of, of a fight in terms of the, you know, going forward and testing Liverpool's backline. Like all the teams have been testing so far this season to great success. Bournemouth failed to do so. Look, the third goal. I had to stop watching the City game and just admire that goal, man. As much as I give Trent a lot of criticism and a lot of, you know, you know, flack for his defense, you know, defensive work, going forward, we know he's devastatingly really, really good. He's really, really damn good. And in terms of the best attacking right back in the world, maybe you could say he's there. You see what I'm saying? He's up there. I'm not going to go and say he's the... I'm not putting labels on anybody right about now. But that was a freaking hell of a goal. That's a worldie. That is a worldie, man. Brilliant give and go. And Trent involved in the build-up and the one, two, the back and forth. And to get that ball and to smash it past Travers, who had a... You know, it was a travesty. That's being... That, I think that is being overused because... It's not the first time I've seen Mark Travers, you know, concede many goals. I think the, the previous time when Bournemouth was in the Premier League, he 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 got a a, 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 a can't a, Bournemouth copped a couple beatdowns and he was in goal. This can't do too. This can't be too good for him and his career because Bournemouth they they brought in Neto from Barcelona and and I and I and I, and I think Neto is going to come in the next game. Maybe Scott Parker might persist with him so not to damage a young man's confidence too much. But look, you got to make these tough decisions, netto and goal, for the next game. So 28 minutes, 3-0 to Liverpool. So the fourth goal did come in the 31st minute. Roberto Firmino, spectacular finish. Salah attempting a pass. The ball ricocheted off the Bournemouth defender. And Firmino with somewhat of a bicycle. Karate kick type goal, you know what I mean? So that will do his confidence a whole lot of good because, in my opinion, Roberto Firmino's goal scoring form has waned tremendously. And that was, you know, that'll do his confidence a whole lot of good. And Liverpool scored nine on the day. And we've been talking about the lack of Sadio Mane in the attack. And this could be the reason why Liverpool are not doing well. Maybe it is, but Liverpool have turned the page here basically in this Bournemouth game. And they won't want it to be a one-off thing where because Bournemouth are seemingly the weakest team in the league as we speak, that Liverpool took advantage of them and then they're going to go back to their old ways in their next game. You see, because I think they face Newcastle in their next match and that's not going to be an easy, 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 easy walk in the park. In, in the park. Like this one was a, basically a walk in the park. And... Liverpool, they, they, they have to basically stay focused and not get too carried away with this 9-0 job. And I'm, I'm only saying it's a big result, but you can't get too carried away because it's Bournemouth. I predicted Bournemouth to get relegated. And if you're wondering, I did predict Liverpool to win the league this season. Yeah, I'm dead serious. And I have been predicting Liverpool to win all their games so far this season. But this is the first one they've um, picked up the winning. So, look. 4-0 at halftime, big, big morale boost for Liverpool. The game basically wrapped up, you know, pretty sure that Bournemouth wasn't going to come back there. I think they did manage to, you know, spark a fight back in a previous match, if I'm not mistaken. Now, wasn't there 4-4 between Liverpool and Bournemouth recently? Not recently, but a few seasons ago. Or was it a 4-3 affair where Bournemouth won the game? Something like that. I can't remember. But something like that. But look, 4-0 at halftime. Great. Well, actually, it was 5 0 at halftime with Virgil van Dijk scoring the header. Oh, man. So many goals. One almost slipped through the cracks. So, 5 0 at halftime. Virgil van Dijk not having a lot to do in defense, getting into the act. Five goals to nil. And I was saying to myself, how many goals are we going to see Liverpool score today? The are they going to score 10? They didn't score 10, you know. It's some somehow teams can't get past that nine that nine goal mark, man. It, it's like that nine is just you know you just can't get past that because I think any team cop ten, they you know that that's embarrassing. That is embarrassing for first 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 tier football league. You know what I'm saying? So, ooh, 
What a first half there by Liverpool. Fans must be happy. I know you guys are happy. I know you guys are going to come out in your numbers because you absolutely love when your team picks up, you know, victories, especially a 9-0 job in. I know every, everyone loves when their team wins, but also when your team lose or draw, you got to come out and hear what I got to say. You know what I mean? You might go to the other Liverpool channels, but you got to come out and hear what I got to say and hear the criticism. That's the only way the team's going to improve. You see what I'm saying? So, look, second half, four goals in the second half. The first one was a Chris Metham own goal in the 46th minute. Brilliant work by Trent Alexander-Arnold that square into the box. And Chris Metham putting it in. And forgot to mention that Cavallo came in at halftime for, for um, Harvey Elliott. So that, that's a positive move made by Klopp. If you go back to the 11, you double back really, really quick. Klopp brought from, um, Fabinho back in the team. Dropped Milner, I think um brought in brought in um who did he bring in, in this game? Um I think Henderson started this game. Uh, let me just go back and check the lineup really quick because everything was happening so quickly I wasn't able to really grasp, you know, who was in for who. I think it's Milner out and for Fabino in was the only change, if I'm not mistaken. Henderson and Elliott did start. Yeah, that's the only change. Yeah, that's the only change. So that proved to be the right change, man, because I, I don't understand why Klopp's persisting with Milner from the start, for real. In the future, he needs to use the, the, the midfielders he got in terms of the attacking options. Fabio Carvalho, you hear Klopp talking about that Liverpool need a, they're going to go in for a midfielder. You probably got the damn midfielder right there. And that's Carvalho. You see what I'm saying? Because he came on and he was damn brilliant as well. So, look, just to talk about the goals once again and just continue where we left off there. The Chris Metham own goal, then it was followed up by another goal by Roberto Firmino in the 62nd minute. That was a corner and it was saved by Travers and Firmino had a tap in on the second chance. So, you know, Liverpool exploiting Bournemouth, you know, from those wings, the corners, the set pieces and just winning those first balls and just having loads of space to do their thing. Acres, man, you know, to do their thing on the day. And that is what? Goal number seven there scored by Firmino. Triple sub made by Klopp, Milner, Simikas, and Besiktas came on. And then the eighth goal was scored by Fabio Cavallo after Salah missed yet another glorious chance in the 75th minute. But Cavallo, you know, Trent involved in the build-up, brilliant switch to Simekas. Well, I think Klopp needs to give some some starts. You need to give him some starts, reward his um his brilliance with some with some starts because every time I've seen Simekas lately, he's always been a game changer. Whether he comes off the bench, he's always been a game changer, especially going forward. So good morale boost for Fabio Cavallo. And I know there's going to be a lot more goals to come there. Brilliant volley. And he scored his first goal for Liverpool in the Premier League there. Klopp has to persist with Elliott and Cavalio, if not both of them at times. You see what I'm saying? Let's say Klopp going with Elliott and Cavalio along with Fabinho in the midfield. That's positive. You see what I'm saying? These guys are the future. These guys are more creative than Jordan Henderson. They got more in their legs. I know Henderson is the captain and Klopp might not want to, you know, destroy his morale like that, but it's what's better for the team, right? So, yeah, just giving my two cents, you know, uh, giving an unbiased analysis of the game as a football fan and not really talking about it as a Man City fan. You, you see what I'm saying? I will do a separate video to talk about the Man City game. I don't want to really, you know, intermingle things too much. So, look, things are getting ugly and it got uglier. A ninth goal scored by Luis Diaz from the corner there. So, brilliant stuff, man. Brilliant stuff. I will do more of a deep dive when I do the live stream um, wrap-up of the week's matches. But Liverpool, they ran riot on Bournemouth. They were the, 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 the quintessential Liverpool team under Jurgen Klopp. We saw that team today and not the team we saw for the last couple matches, the first three of the season where... In their last game, they were beaten by Man United. So it was imperative that Liverpool bounce back because if they went and dropped points against Bournemouth, they could well kiss anything to do with the title this season. But look, they are not out of it. 
and, and, I, and I don't think they were ever out of it un, unless they had gone, you know, seven games without a win or ten games without a win. And that wasn't going to happen, in my opinion. But it was a hell of a performance, one of the best performances we've seen from a Liverpool team in the past. I think it was an almost perfect performance in terms of their, their goal scoring prowess, the, the creativity, the passing, the switches, and everything was just on point. Everything, all the stars aligned for Liverpool on the day. 19 shots, 12 on target, 71% of the ball, and 86% pass accuracy compared to Bournemouth with five shots, two on target. Allison hardly had anything to do. I don't think they had any clear cut chances to score where they only had 29% of the ball and completed 68% of 285 passes. It was a utterly poor performance on the day by the Cherries. You know what I mean? Look, I sarcastically tweeted that I was hoping for Cherry's result. But guys, if you go back and you watch my prediction, I predicted Liverpool to win this game. Like, come on. I, I'll be dumb to predict. Yeah, I said I'll be dumb to predict Man United to win last week and they went on to win the game still. But look, it was a big performance by Liverpool. It was what was required and they delivered. They definitely delivered. So I know the fans are happy. Jürgen Klopp's happy. I think, you know, he got his lineup spot on on the day and he don't need to tweak things too much. Liverpool are going through a bit of an injury crisis, so it's understandable that their form and their intensity is going to wane, you know what I mean? So they need to just pull things back, focus, and get back on that train, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm talking about that train where they're competing in the league. Next game is at home against Newcastle United. That one's going to be... A big game, They're definitely a big game. Newcastle not to be played around with. And then the Merseyside Derby against Everton early September. Look, before the Champions League matches, then they do have Wolves. They got Chelsea coming up, Brighton. They do have a game against Arsenal. Some tough games, some tough, tough games coming up. And the one on October 16th against Manchester City, where I'm hoping to attend that game. You know what I'm saying? It's going to cost me to fly over to England and everything, but I want to go and watch that game, though. So the next, let's say, seven or so games for Liverpool, or let's say the next run of fixtures going all the way into October, the mid-October, it's going to be very, very tough for Liverpool. But if if they play like they play today, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. But guys, man, that's my thoughts. About 17, 18 minutes. You know, let me know yours in the comment section. I know you guys will have a lot to say because, of course, Liverpool won the game. Okay, so... From your boy Dom, thanks for tuning in. I'll, I'll talk more about this game in my live stream wrap up of the week's games. And make sure you subscribe if you're new, like the video if you haven't yet done so. And let me know if I miss any major talking points down below. I think I covered most, you know, bases. And uh, until next time, peace out. Rich, score. Peace.